Hey, hello guys. So hi, my name is Andrew and I am the uh, CS director for LodgeDem and um, we're just going to wait a couple, like we'll, we'll wait a minute to see if anyone's coming in and at like around 5.32, we'll start talking about um, what we're doing this, uh, this session, which is 10 weeks. Okay, so it seems like <clears throat> most people are in now, so I'm just going to start share screen. So basically, um, for the next 10 weeks, we're going to go over a basic um, walkthrough of like coding. Uh, specifically, we're going to be working on the Python language. But what we're going to do in these 10 weeks um, and the concepts you're going to learn will help you um, will set a foundation for any other programming language you might learn. So once you've, you know, finish these 10 weeks, you'll be able to have a good understanding of not just Python, but programming in general. So if you go on to learn, let's say like Java in the future or do AP CompSci in high school, um, it'll be much easier because you already have some sort of foundation for the programming logic. So um, just based off of like, um, just wondering out of curiosity, have any of you guys here um, done any like programming before, any sort of coding? You can just type it in the chat or say it out loud. Okay. Mm. Okay. So a little. Uh, so, okay. So a lot of people say a little. Uh, I just suck a little. I. That's okay. I mean, that's why we're here. So everyone can learn. Um, so yeah, most people are like, no, a little bit. Um, so that's perfect. So. Um, hopefully you guys can all follow along with this. So this is, this is designed to start from like scratch. So, um, I'll just quickly start. So before we jump into the lesson itself, um, we'll just talk about programming in general. Programming is a way to tell your computer how to perform tasks by giving it specific instructions, just like a teacher would have to give a, you know, a student instruction on how to, let's say, Let's say like a teacher has to give a kindergarten student, tell them how to, let's say, A, like, you know, sort things by color or like cut a paper out or like cut a star out of a paper. We have to do the same thing with computers because we have to assume that computers know nothing and we have to tell them basically everything. And as I mentioned, humans can communicate with different languages and there's also different languages computer can use. Um, these are called programming languages, and there's hundreds of them, each with their own uses, uh, styles, and uses. Um, just off, like, you know, just some common ones, I'll name some common ones that you might eventually learn if you decide to pursue computer science uh, C, C, Sharp, Python, Java, um, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Um, that's CSS, JavaScript, and HTML are all with the front end, and Python and Python, Java, and JavaScript are somewhat considered backend, um, backend programming languages. And same thing with like C++, C Sharp. Um, and there's so much, so many more programming languages, each with their own, you know, specific uses. Like I mentioned, they they excel in their own way. And I'm not sure if you guys uh have heard you guys you can do a lot of things with um programming. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh like Minecraft Java edition, that's, you know, coded. I'm pretty sure that's coded in uh, using it's either Java or JavaScript. So um, there's really, the, and the possibilities are endless. So, you know, for today, um, 
we're not going to be doing anything that fancy. We're just going to be introducing you guys. And so we're going to use an online um, environment called Google Collaboratory. In other words, you can call it Google Collab. And to create the actual code, you'll just see a plus button up here. And by clicking it, you'll see a place to type where you put your code. So you, if you guys, um, I can either share, I'll share, I'll put the link in chat to everyone. So you guys can, you know, add to a copy of this, or I think, um, yeah, so you guys can kind of have access to this, but you can also, um, I think it's actually better if you guys follow along in your blank Google collaboratory. So yeah. Um, so if you guys need help creating a Google collab, just, um, Tell me, I think if you search up Google Colab and then you click um, click Google Colab, open the Colab, and then just it'll just uh, create a new one. So like, if we go here, Google Colab, sorry. And here, and then you'll have a lot of stuff here you can do. And then you'll normally want to create a new notebook and you'll get a blank one here. And basically as I'm, walking along, you guys can follow along with what I'm doing. So yeah, I'll give you guys a second to do that. And if you guys are done, just shoot me a message so I know when to start talking again. Oh, no, sorry. Hi, I'm here, Jason. Um, so I was just, did you just join or um, were you here before? Right now we're just, um, oh, okay. Oh, sorry, that, then, then it might not make sense. So I'll just quickly, um, so for now, Jason, just um, create a new um, Google Colab um, which is the online environment we're going to use. So just go to Google, search up, type in Google Colab, C-O-L-A-B. I'll just type it into chat, Google Colab. And you'll click on the first link. It'll take you to, it's basically an online environment made by Google. And then just create a new notebook and you can follow along. So let's wait for you. Uh, give everyone a minute to finish that. Um, okay, so I'll just um, continue now. So the first thing you can do with uh, Python is um, you can print, you, know, you write print statements. It'll just basically print whatever you tell it to print. And in this line, you see how you rewrite print and then in parentheses, and then inside those parentheses, we're gonna add um, quotation marks. In Python, you can either use double quotation marks or single quotation marks. And inside those quotation marks, you write whatever you want to write. So whatever you want it to print. So in this case, I'd sort of print hello. Um, a lot of time, uh, I don't, sorry, my computer's very slow right now. Okay, there we go. So you could tell it to print hello world. And you see it'll print right underneath. And even if I change these to single quotation marks, it'll do the same thing. There's really no difference, Python. Um, interprets both of them as uh, the same thing. Uh, 
And so continuing on, um, we'll start um, talking a little bit more about um, more than just printing one line. And what we can do is um, we can print multiple print statements. And if you, if you write one print statement, you'll have to press enter, go to the next line to write another one. So running this will print, hello world, my name is Andrew Lee. And as you can see, um, everything, remember everything has to have quotation marks around it if you want it to print. Because if you don't, as you see in this case, it'll throw an error because it'll tell you invalid syntax. So make sure you have quotation marks inside your print statement. Um, you guys can practice printing anything you guys want, you know, print like, you know, print my favorite color is like blue or something like that or anything. So the next thing we're going to go over is, um, well, we, there's a lot of uh, there's special characters in print statements we can use. One of them is a, well, is a backslash, sorry, um, yeah, it's a backslash n. And a backslash n just indicates that you want it to go on a new line. So print hello and then you write backslash n would put everything after the backslash n on the next line. So that's why you see hello here and a world on the next line. And then this is just gonna print a new line. So right there. So any questions about this, anything so far? All right, um, I'll take that as a no. So I'll continue. Um, so like I said, each print function will automatically print a new line, but we can specify what we want at the end of a line. Um, in this case, the end is a at symbol. So then it'll print hello and then at world. And then if you don't specify it again, it'll just go back to the default, which is a new line. So yeah, so here print and then explanation mark goes to a new line, but world does not because the end is an at instead of a new line. Um, here's more of the same thing. So hello world is going to print it into two different lines and intro to Python. As you can see, that prints it at three different lines. And then default n is backslash it's n, which means a new line. And then if you put n is equal to, um, like it's equal to just quotation mark, open quotation mark, close quotation mark. That basically just means that there's nothing there. So it's like blank space and it'll just put the words right, ne words right next to each other. And it, yeah, it gets rid of the new line between print statements. All right, I'm gonna move on to variables. So um, any questions about uh, printing? All right, so, okay, I guess we'll move on. So with the uh, variables, which is arguably one of Python's most, um, one of programming's like most powerful tools is the ability to store variables. And just like it's used in math class, a variable stores a value that you can keep on using and changing. So X, um, in this case, we store it as, um, what is it? that's 100,000. And then when we print X, then it'll print 100,000. But note here that we're not using the quotation marks anymore because we don't want it to print the actual letter X. We want it to print the variable X. And when you want it to print a variable, you do not use the quotation marks. So when you don't use the quotation marks, it'll print 100,000. But when you do, it'll print the physical letter X itself. And 
variables can be changed. So at first it's 100,000, but then now we change it to 200. And then when we print it again, you can see 200 is printed. And then once again, we're just printing X. And then as you can see, you can keep on changing it as many times as you want. Change to 500, you print it, it's 500. Change to 100, you print it, it's 100. And if you don't change it, then X is just whatever the last value it was changed to. So this print X is gonna run and then it'll print 100 since that's the newest version of X that it remembers. All right, so any questions about variables so far? All right, great. So now we're gonna move on to combining print statements as well as variables. And we're gonna do that by writing sentences. So one thing that you'll find useful is able to print out a message, but also include the value of a variable in that message. So in this case, we assigned a variable called number of flowers and we set that equal to 10. And when we print, I have, and then we add a comma and we put in number of flowers and then another comma and then the, you know, the string flowers, then it'll print, I have number of flowers of flowers. And in this case, number of flowers is gonna be substituted for 10 because, um, because that's what we defined the variable as. Sorry, I'm gonna, okay. there we go. So as you see here, it'll print, I have 10 flowers, print it again, it'll be, um, I don't know what the difference, oh, it's just a period, okay. I have no fl 10 flowers again. Um, and as you can see, adding spaces here doesn't do anything, it'll still print the same thing. Because what the comma is, is the comma is like, comma is kind of like a space-ish. So if you put a comma there and you put a variable, it'll auto automatically put spaces on the left and the right of, uh, of whatever variable is inside. And down here, you'll see that we make a variable cost and we do the same thing again. So the apple cost, and then we want it to be two. So then we put the variable cost in here, cost dollars. And let's say we changed cost to let's say $4 now, then we run it again. And you'll see that it'll say the Apple costs $4 now. So that's how to use variables along with print statements. So to practice that, um, there's a practice exercise here. Um, write a print statement below to say I own 100 books using the variable. Uh, okay, well, the, that's kind of the answer. So, but um, I'm going to delete these. So, write a print statement below to say I own 100 books like this using the variable number of books. And for the second exercise, then write a print statement to say I ate five apples today using the variable number of apples. And afterwards, change the variable to 10 and then print out I ate 10 apples this week um, by using the same variable, of course. So I'll give you guys um, three, three minutes, three to five minutes to do that. Um, so try that out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me.
All right, so it's been like about three minutes. Um, so for now, it looks like we're um. So let's see. Um, if you guys are done, or if you guys need more time, just um, yeah. If you guys need more time, could you shoot me a message? Otherwise, I'll assume that you guys have finished this question. Okay, great. I'm not getting any messages, which means that I think that everyone should be finished already. So um, I'll just show you guys the answer to this one. I'll type it in chat myself. So for number of books one, this one's pretty straightforward. We just want to print, I own 100 books, and then comma, use the variable number of books. And then Oh, okay, sorry, this should be, I don't know, not 100. It should be I own, and then 100 is number of books and books. So that's the first one. Second one is very similar, where we use the same format. We print, instead of I own books, this time it's apples, so I ate number of apples. Of apples. And then we want to change the variable to be 10. Oh, hi, excuse me. If you just joined in, could you mute yourself? 3 p.m. What's your team Oh, um. Hi, if you just joined in, do you mind muting yourself, please? Okay, all right, cool. So yeah, now we change the variable to 10 and then we are gonna print out the same thing again. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the same line and then bam. So first site, five apples and then it should probably be today. Okay. Week and yeah, so continuing on, we're gonna talk about um types of variables, and what we've been working with so far is we've been working with two things we've been working with integers, and we've also been working with strings. So, a string is just the quotation marks that we were using, um, those really represent a string, and a string can use uh, both quotation marks and apostrophes, like I said, um, but it had, you have to be consistent. So you shouldn't use, um, you can't use apostrophe on one side and um, uh, it's called? you can't use apostrophe on one side and quotation marks on the other, otherwise it won't work. As you can see, it's like giving the red line, which means that something's wrong. Um, it's also typically good to like, if you're writing one, long piece of code to just stick with the same type the whole time. Don't switch in between using uh, doubles and singles. Just get more confusing, look kind of weird. Um, strings can be like medium length like this. They can be a single word. They can be a sentence. They can be as long as you want, or they can be as short as you want like this, which is just a blank string with like no nothing in it, but it's still considered a string because it has the quotation marks. And the other um, variable type we're working with is called an integer. And um, integers are just like integers in math. So um, who, who can name me, just type in chat any integer that you can think of. Yeah, great, exactly. So a lot of like 43, 7, 5, 98, 1, 69. Okay, all of these are integers. Um, yeah, from Lenny, that's also an integer, pretty long one, that is. But um, Python can, pretty sure Python can still hold that. So um, basically, a negative one as well. Integers can be negative. Okay, all right, let's, let's, that's, wow. <laughs> that's um, pretty big integer. So, okay, cool, let's stop spam, spamming the chat now. So anyways, like I mentioned, integers are just, all of these are perfect examples of integers. Anything that's, basically a whole number, it could be positive, it could be negative. Um, 
So one example in the same example is an integer. Um, we could also change this to like 43, I think someone typed, and it'll be the same thing. Um, that's just basically an integer. It's that simple. Um, and here's an example of a float, which is 3.14. So can any of you guess what a float might be? Like, what's the difference between a float and an integer? So what's the difference between 3.14 and 43? Exactly, it's a decimal place. So that decimal place is the, right, it's 1.0 versus one, that's a great example. So 1.0 actually in Python is stored differently than one because 1 1.0 is considered a float and one is considered an integer. So um, basically anything, anything with a decimal point, even if it's 1.0 is considered a float. So a float is anything with a decimal place. 3.14 is a float, um, 6.626 is a float, um, 6.02 a float, anything that has a decimal place. And another float is also a fraction. Um, I, I believe typically integer divided by integer will return a, it'll usually return a decimal if it doesn't divide evenly. And I think even if it does divide evenly, think it still returns, um, I'm not sure, but if we do eight divided by two, and then we print out some for one. Uh, okay, another, forgot our parentheses. Yeah, so it'll be a float. So any integer division will return a float. So even if eight divided by two is even in, in your mind, you might be thinking, that's so easy. Eight divided by four, two is just um, it's just four, right? But the computer is going to return that as 4.0 because any integer divided by any integer, even if it divides into a whole number, will become um, a float. So yeah. Oh, yeah. What's up, Ethan? Do you have a question? Uh do, do the floats need to be called some float or is that just the name? Oh, that's just the name. Like those are just variable names. You can call it anything. Um, yeah. So, okay, like, uh, okay, Milan, yeah, put that out. So that's a pretty, really long expression. Um, this is also going to return a float as well, definitely, because there's so many, there's already a float to begin with. So, um, Integer divided by integer will return a float. Um, but we also have, um, there's also can be integer multiplication, which will return um, integer multiplication. We're going to go over underneath. So, yeah. Um, and the third data type we're going to talk about is a Boolean. A Boolean is just basically a true or false statement. Um, in this case, uh, we have a Boolean called some Boolean, and then we set that equal to false. Another Boolean called high, set that equal to true. When we print high, it'll just print true. Um, but this true isn't really exactly, when we print it, it'll print out the words T-R-U-E, right? But this doesn't, it's not the same thing as the string true. So high is not equal to, um, like these two are not the same thing, okay? That's important to know. True, this true, Boolean true is different from string true because high, it holds like a true or false value while the string true, it just holds, it doesn't really read what's inside of it. It just knows that it's like a word, right? This true is like an actual, like uh, you can use this for things like, we're gonna go over probably in like, uh, we're gonna go over in the future, which is uh, like if statements or while loops, stuff like that to, to compare things, whether this, whether this is greater than that, or this is less than that, stuff like that. So as you can see, we can print some string. This is a, that's a string. Print some integer, print 43, print some bool. It'll print um, false. And if you print the type of some float one, it'll just print float. So all of these can be printed, but um, they inherently hold different things. So uh, moving on. We're going to do math operations. And like I mentioned before, um, we're going to be doing the first math operation would be addition. An integer plus an integer um, 
is will return an integer and an integer minus an integer will also return an integer. Because if you think about it logically, an integer plus an integer, that is always going to be an integer, right? It'll never, there's no chance of it ever being a float. Like five plus two plus any integer is always going to return another integer. Same thing with subtraction. Um, and with multiplication, it's also the same thing. So if you have, instead of 4.3, if you have four times nine, two integers multiplied is going to return an integer. However, if we put in a float in this, we do 4.3 times nine, then that's actually going to return a float because now we have a decimal place involved. And the same goes for addition and subtraction, where if one of the, if any one of the, um, anything in the expression is a float, then the final expression is going to be a float. So if you have like 3.1, I'm sorry, excuse me. So if you have 3.1 plus 5, this will return 8.1, which is actually a float because that's a decimal place. Subtraction is the same thing. 10.1 minus 2 is going to return, I believe, 8.1. So that is also going to have a decimal place too. Even if it's like 10.0 minus 2, this is going to return 8.0 because um, that's how uh, Python interprets things. And division, as mentioned above, any sort of division is going to return a float. Um, exponentiation. Um, does everyone here just does everyone here know does anyone here know what exponents are? Does anyone here like not know what exponents are? I know what they are. All right, great. Okay, so as long as everyone knows what they are, it'll uh, make things a lot easier. But in case anyone doesn't. Quick explanation. Three to the power of four just means you multiply three by itself four times. So three times three times three times three, which is 81. Um, so yeah. And as you see, when we run this, um, sorry, it's okay. If we run this, uh, there's no output because um all we did was that we did the adding and we assigned it to a variable. But we have to, in order to see our calculation, we have to print it. So when we add in these two print statements, um, print addition and print multiplication, it'll print these two values. Multiplication was 4.3 times nine, turns this value. Um, and then print addition 3.1 plus five is gonna return 8.1. And just a quick note, hashtagging means that you're commenting a message instead of programming. So as you can see, all of these lines down here are not actually run when I click the run button. Like this doesn't affect the code because they have a hashtag in front of them. All programming languages have some sort of way to comment and commenting is actually a really good, um, it's a good practice to when you're writing longer pieces of code so you can keep more organized your code and don't get confused. So yeah, basically this is what it is. Um, that's uh, commenting. And what I did before, when I highlighted these and I commented out, so now as you can see, it doesn't run anymore. I uncomment it and now it does run. And moving on, another math operation is modulo. Um, this one's probably a little bit more complicated. Um, so, so this is probably a little bit more complicated. So does anyone here know what modulo is? Or like, if you guys know, um, just, you guys can, yeah. Yeah, so, um, I'll just explain it in case you don't, uh, Lanny, that's great. So X percent, it is X percent. I don't know if it's called X percent of, an, of another number. That's how you write, type it in Python, but. What about in math? What if you take, um, what is like seven modulo two? What, what would that return? Just, yeah, it's a, it's a remainder, exactly. So seven modulo two would return one because seven divided by two is three with a remainder of one. So in case any of you guys haven't really touched upon that subject in math yet, modulo is basically another way of creating a remainder. So,
as you can see here, um, we have modulo 35 mod two would be um, when you print this, it'll get one. So just a quick question to practice this su subject. What is the, what will the following return? We have mod 28 and then in Python to show modulo, we use percentage sign. So 28 percent three, um, what will this return? Just uh, before you guys actually run this and print it, um, type it to me in chat. So I know you understand the concept. All right, cool. So pretty much everyone typed one to me. So that's great. And when we print this, Python can confirm it. So when we print mod, we'll print one. So yeah, great, congratulations. So after that, we'll do a quick exercise. Um, this is actually a really common exercise a lot of people do. And don't look at the answer. Um, sorry, I keep on doing this. So basically what we're gonna do is we're going to get to a value six by using these three variables. So we are in your final equation, you're only allowed to use X's, Y's, and Z's. You're not allowed to actually use, don't use any actual uh, numbers. So I don't wanna see any like twos, threes, fours, only use X, Y, and Z, and use math operations to get to the number six. I'll give you guys like five minutes to do that. And if you guys have any answer, just um, you guys can type it to me in chat or just wait until the time is over. So five minutes till 6.15. And ask me if you need any help.
All right, so uh, being back, um, got a couple of answers. So um, does anyone does anyone want to share the answer that they got for this one? Because there's a lot of ways to do this. I can. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I will actually stop sh screen sharing, and um, if you want, you can share your screen. Well, I can just like. Oh, you can. Oh, you just want to verbally say it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, all right. What did you do? Okay. All right. All right. So. In this case, um, Ethan did y divided by z plus x. So y divided by an in parentheses x divided by z. So let's see. And then print answer. So this one does get us to six. And then how it does is it does 30, and then divided by x divided by z. So 50 divided by 10 is five. And then 30 divided by five would be six. Um, so that's one way to do it. I think someone else typed in chat y plus y divided by z. Um, so if we print that, y plus y would be 60, and then z is 10. So 60 divided by 10 would once again be uh, 6. Um, another answer that uh, I guess in Yi found was x plus z divided by z, which would be. It's also 60 divided by 10. So that's there's a lot of 60 divided by 10s, I see. Um, Kevin did a pretty long solution, which is this one. Oh, oh, this should be lowercase, yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that in Python is uh, case sensitive. So lowercase and capital are different. So yeah, this one works as well. X divided by Z, so 50 divided by 10, which is five. Minus y divided by z is three, which is two. Two plus x divided by z, which is five, seven, and then minus, uh, I think I did my math wrong somewhere here. X divided by z should be five. Five plus five is 10, 10 minus, oh, 10 minus three is seven. Seven minus one is six, yeah. So there we go. So as you can see, there's like so many ways to do this, do this and that's um, kind of the beauty of the question. And yeah, so the next topic we're going to go on to is using math operations on one variable. And how this works is that it, this allows us to increment a or a ver any variable by a spe specific amount um, or multiply it by a specific uh, number. So in this case, we have the variable a, which is 25. And let's say we want to increase 20 the variable a by 10, so that 25 is now 35. But we don't wanna explicitly give it the amount 35, we just wanna add 10 to whatever it is currently. Um, and the way to do that is we can write a is equal to a plus 10, which basically means that this assigns the variable a to whatever a was before. So this would be 25 plus 10 makes it 35. So right now a would be 35. So as you can see, when you print it, a is 35. Um, a faster way to do this is a plus equal to 10, which is basically assigning the number 10 to whatever a is, and then printing it would return um, 35 plus 10, which is 45. a minus equal to 10 would subtract 10 from a, which would go back to 35. You can do the same thing for multiplying division. So times equal to is two, which would mean um, you want to multiply by two. So 35 becomes 70. Divided by equal to five means divided by five. Seven divided by five would be equal to 14. So that's uh, the answers below. So any questions thus far about uh, math operations? All right, I'll take, this, uh, take that as a note. So I'm gonna continue. Um, so a quick exercise um, with this one. What will X be um, after all of these operations? I'll give you guys like 
a minute or two to do that. And okay, well, this kind of gives away the answer, but um, just try to walk through it yourself. So pretend you didn't see that. Um, what will X? What will X look like after all of these? All right, so I'll quickly, um, I got mostly ones. So I'm gonna quickly run through how to do this question. So initially you have five, x equal to five, and then you have um, this here. You add five to five, which would make it 10. Then you subtract two, which makes it eight. You multiply eight by eight, which makes 64. 64 divided by four is 16. And then you find 16 and then divided by three and whatever the remainder is will be your answer. And 16 divided by three would return you a um, remainder of one. And that's why when you print out, print X at the end, it'll get, you'll get one. So right now we're gonna go over a question that's uh, about taking an input. So far, we've kind of just been writing programs on our own, we haven't been any asking the the audience or like whoever's using the pro the program to you know input any numbers so what this is going to help us interact with the audience in a way um what we have here is you can have a grade variable and it'll ask you input what grade you're in and when we, when we run this it'll prompt the user to enter a number and stores it at in the variable grade and when we print the variable grade, um, you can see it'll print five here. And then let's say if we print grade, um, let's say I'm in grade five, then it'll print five. And then if we print type of grade, it'll be a class string. And then if you notice here, this returns an error because it says you can only concatenate string, not integer to string. So when you print grade plus five, grade is actually a string and then you can't add strings to integers. Um, and as an overall note, in, inputs always return a string. So even if you put in the number five, it'll interpret as the string five, which is different from the actual integer five. So how did the way to change that and make this one actually work is we can do a little bit of string can do a, like I uh, you can basically change the data type of an integer to a, a string or a string to an integer in the so what we can do here is we can put um str which would uh sorry this should not be okay we could put int and then grade so this way now it'll actually work so five plus five is actually gonna return ten because this cast the um the string of five into an integer of five and now you can actually do addition with it um so yeah uh to kind of practice this let's we'll write a program i'll give you guys five more minutes until the end of class to write a program that asks someone for how old they are and then print that number out so very similar to what we did up here i'll give you guys uh three to five minutes
Okay, so um, does anyone um have a solution to this uh to this problem? Yeah. Okay. Um. Great. Uh, do you want to share a screen or do you want to just tell me that's how to type it out? In uh, like the whiteboard share. Uh, no, I mean like 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 screen like screen sharing your screen. Oh no, I can tell you. Okay. All right. Sure. So it's prompt and then like is it is it called prompt though? Like oh well, what did we call it again? I was like more used to JavaScript. Uh-huh. So it's input. So uh -huh. that means age equals input, and then we ask them like how old are you? Uh-huh. Then we print age okay and then we print yeah what are you print age okay so how old are you um i'll just say like if i'm let's say I pretend i'm 10 years old then i'll print 10 okay great so that's exactly what we're supposed to do so good job kevin um and there's a couple of challenge questions at the end um the first one is just to practice print statements, uh, is to print out this check mark. Um, the second one is Tommy had to split 45 apples among himself and five other friends, which means six people, and then print out how many apples will have left over using this format. Um, the third one is write a program that shows how much is left after paying only 20, 10, five, and $1 bills. Um, set a variable to some value X, and then that's how much you have to pay. And then basically this is this should be the final, um, that final output. And then you write a program that takes in a person's name, age, prints the amount in one sentence. Last one, print the reverse of X without directly printing 82. So I'm gonna share, actually copy this link and share it with you guys so that you guys can check out the um, problems at the bottom. You guys won't be able to directly edit this yourself. So just um, make a copy and you know create a copy and then um edit it on your own and these one two three four five questions five questions is like your um it's, it's more or less optional homework it's really for your own benefit um but we're gonna go over them at the beginning of class uh next week so cool um so i hope okay i did um Hopefully everyone got the link by now. So I put it in the chat. And if you guys have any guys have any other questions, feel free to stick around. Otherwise, uh, have a good week. Thank you for thank you so much for coming. Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. Yeah. All right, bye.